Hello, my name is Michael Smith, and this is another video in our basic procedural texture series. So in our previous uh, tutorials, first we just started with what's a procedural texture and what are texture coordinates. Then we went over some of the different coordinate systems that are available to you. Now what we're going to do is talk about manipulating the texture coordinates themselves. So it's really common that we want to take a texture, like a basic texture. Uh, in this case, I'm just doing rings. Uh, I changed that a bit from the first tutorial. We're not going to talk about how. This is just easier to show what I want to show. Um, and commonly what we want to do is, uh, for instance, uh, you may remember from the first tutorial, what we're doing is computing a sine wave, uh, in this case over the distance from the origin, that's what gives us the rings. So as we go farther away, we're putting a higher value into the sine function. The sine function goes from minus one to plus one over and over, and that makes rings. Um, one of the things we had to do was we had to multiply uh, the value we were passing into sine. And the reason was, if I turn this back to one, nothing interesting happens in sine over the range of zero to one. So that's a really common problem. And the way we're gonna get around that is we're going to uh, manipulate the input coordinates. So for instance, if we want the coordinates, instead of going from zero to one, to go from let's say zero to 100, so that way our texture is gonna show more detail, uh, we can do that by manipulating this coordinate system. Okay, how do we do that? So there are a couple ways to do that. The, I guess standard way, I don't use it because I don't like it, is add vector mapping. So I'm not gonna use this. You can play with it in your free time. Maybe I'll make another video. This standardizes a bunch of different things you can do to manipulate the coordinate system into one node. Uh, the reason I don't like it is it's a little bit opaque what it's doing. It changes depending on the type. It's supposed to make it more intuitive, but for me, it just makes it more confusing. So uh, I'm gonna right click on that, delete it, and we're not gonna use it. Um, okay, so how, how would I do this? So remember that the UV coordinate is just a vector, uh, just a set of values, X, Y, Z. For UV, X and Y have values, Z is just zero. So all we have to do is manipulate that vector uh, to do what we want. So let's say we wanna scale. So instead of having it go from zero to one, we want it to go from zero to 100. If we do that, we're gonna get more detail, right? Because instead of this function evaluating over zero to one from left to right, it's gonna evaluate from zero to one in this tiny little chunk here and keep going all the way to 100. And that'll get us a lot more you know, of the rings that we wanna see. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna to go to add, we're going to go to vector, we're go oh, sorry, converter, we're gonna to go to vector math. Uh, and we're gonna drop it on this line here. So by default, it does add, this will do nothing. We're gonna get in a vector, we're gonna add nothing to the vector. It will be the same vector, same boring picture. We're gonna change this from add to scale. What that's gonna do is multiply the X, Y, and the Z all by the same value. Still kind of boring because the value is one, but if I make this 100, now every value coming in, so if it's zero, 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 multiply it by 100, get zero, zero, zero. At the other end, if it's one, 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 we're gonna multiply it by 100 and get 100, 100, 100. Um, every value is gonna be bigger, and the result is that now we see all the rings between zero and 100, even though it's only just in the UV coordinate space of zero to one. So uh, that's one thing you might wanna do. You might also want to move around where center is. So you can do that too. So we're gonna take this vector math, do shift D to duplicate, drop it here. And instead of scale, that's gonna make yeah crazy detail. Instead of scale, we're going to do add. So now what we're gonna do is add a value. So what does this mean? Well, uh, let's say I add uh, the value one, one. Uh, right now, zero, zero is at the bottom left corner. If I take every coordinate coming in, starting at zero, zero, and add one, one to it, then what's gonna be at the bottom left corner is one, one. Um, so the result of that is everything's gonna move the texture to the bottom and the left, right? Because zero, zero will now be off to the bottom left and one, one will be the new base. So actually I won't use one, let's do uh, 20 because then we'll actually, oh, I'm sorry, I will do one, one, sorry. Um, so there we go, it's offset. And again, we've scaled, so now we get more detail. And now the zero, where the zero, zero was, the center of the circle is now gonna be off here and to the left. Um, the final thing we might wanna do is rotate it. So we can go here, go to, oh, sorry, wrong one. So we're gonna go delete with reconnect, add uh, vector, vector rotate. For some reason, that's not under vector math. We'll drop it on the line. It's not doing anything yet. Um, the second thing I wanna do is translate this guy so that uh, we can actually see it rotating, right? Because right now it's a circle. So if I rotate it, um, this is centering at zero, zero, zero around the axis x, y, x, y, zero, z, one. So the x is coming out of the screen. Um, but I can change the center. 
So let's do that. And now as I rotate it, you can see it's rotating around this new center point. So that's how we do it. Uh, this is gonna be really useful uh, for a bunch of reasons. Oh, something else you can do. So for instance, you might wanna stretch it. So in this case, we've just scaled everything equally. Uh, often for various textures, wood is a good example of this. There, there are lots. You wanna stretch something in one direction and not in another uh, to get a different shape out of it. So to do that, instead of scale, which multiplies everything equally, we're going to go to multiply. So multiply currently by zero, which means nothing happens. I'm going to multiply by one, one, one. Uh, as you remember, there's not much detail between zero and one, so this doesn't do anything fun. But now, if I just scale the Y, you can see the Y gets closer. And if I scale the X, now we get the circle back. So you can see doing this, I can stretch it along the X and Y axis alone, uh, and that'll add some extra valuable effects. So back to what I was saying, uh, why would you do this? So this is really useful as you're making procedural textures. Either you want the whole texture to be bigger, smaller, offset, or stretched in a particular way, or you're combining a bunch of different bits of texture together and some aspect of it you wanna be stretched. So you might want scratches, for instance. So you want long, thin, uh, uh, lines, well, you might take something that just gives you dots, but stretch it along one axis, and that dot now becomes a line, for instance. So uh, manipulating your coordinate system, very valuable. This is the basics of how to do it. Maybe I'll do another tutorial, but whatever, you can play with this um, vector uh, mapping if you want to. Like I said, I don't like it. And that is it. Thank you.